Hi, I'm Lou. Torque converters are one of the most common and least understood components on mini bikes. Today I'll show you a few secrets. First, a problem during installation is that these two don't get lined up properly. You want the back of this pulley and the back of this pulley to be lined up perfectly. If it's a little bit twisted, you will shred these belts instantly. Next, you have to keep the weights in this driver pulley lubricated or you won't have smooth acceleration. Take the bell off the driver. Graphite actually works a little longer, but grease works fine. When this thing spins up, the weights need to be able to push out and the lubrication helps. While you're in here, you can lubricate your bearings, but mine are in pretty good shape. Be very careful not to get any lubricant on this plate, the other plate, or on your belt. Next, you get better performance with a newer belt. This one's in pretty good shape, but this one's pretty worn out compared to this new one. You can see it's a lot thinner. We'll run this bike with old and new belts and compare the results on the black box dyno. Now we'll put on the new one. The flat side of the belt goes to the back. Twist this and pull out to loosen it up. Then this belt fits in really easily in there. While we're waiting for this test, I'd like to invite you to my Mini Bike Newbies Facebook group. Let's compare the black box dyno run stats for the old and new belt. For reference, we're running a completely stock 196 motor. The old belt took us from 0 to 30 in 9.6 seconds. The new belt cut down 2 seconds to bring us to 7.6. That's an amazing 20% gain. Our old speed of 31 got bumped up to 34.5. Our minimum gearing, which helps achieve better top end speed, went from 8.4 down to 5.6. That's an incredible 33% gain. When working with torque converters, minimum gearing is by far the most important stat. If your bike is not doing what you want, you won't know if it's the engine or the transmission if you don't know the gearing. And this explains why we were spinning up to 4700 RPM with the old belt and only 4100 with the new one. With the old belt, the only way the mini bike could get speed was to wind the motor way up. With the new belt, there's an RPM burst to get the bike moving, but then RPM comes down and our taller gearing is generating speed. The better gearing also explains why we only had a torque of 5.6 foot-pounds with the old belt and 8.2 with the new. I'm not sure it was obvious in the video, but the new belt felt significantly stronger. For the rest of this video, I'm switching from that Trailmaster with the 196 to mine with the Wildcat 223. It's not an issue here, but on cheaper torque converters, this nut can spin off. May be tempted to solve that by torquing this nut down really hard, but that's a bad idea. Excess torque on that nut puts sideways pressure on this bearing and causes it to fail. It's best just to put this on snug and use Loctite glue to keep it on, or better yet, drill through it once it's on and then put a cotter key in to hold it. This is what I did on another mini bike. I ran into a problem with this Trailmaster driver pulley that has these ball bearing idlers. For some reason, it wouldn't shift fully into high gear. Thanks to Tim Salvino for guiding me to use this standard Comet driver with the brass bushing. It works a lot better. The driven pulley is also somewhat adjustable. You can get a green, yellow, or red spring in here, and you can set the position of the spring. If you want more speed, you put it here. If you want more torque, you put it here. We'll try to pick up some more speed. You can see that red spring in the middle and we want to move it from there over to that s hole when you push this back down you want to pre-twist it a little bit so that triangle ends up on the other side of that glide honestly hardly any difference we only picked up 0.3 miles per hour and dropped 100 rpm the number one mistake most people make with torque converters is not choosing the proper back sprocket. With a clutch setup you want to go smaller for more speed but with a torque converter that's not true. Take the output sprocket of 10 teeth times the inches on the back tire of 19 divided by 3.17 so the optimum rear sprocket teeth is 60. Trailmasters come stock with a 46 tooth but luckily I have a 60 tooth here that will try a before and after run on the black box dyno. We're not using it here, but the dyno also has a time slip feature which gives you times and speeds for distances from 30 feet up to a quarter mile. Going from a 46 to a 60 rear should give us a 30% reduction. Instead, we're getting a 15% gearing increase from 6 to 5. This blew my mind at first, but here's what's going on. With the 46 rear and a 10 tooth clutch, we have 4.6 gearing. And with 1060, we have a gearing of 6. But the torque converter wants maximum torque. So what does it do? 
it lowers its belt and gearing until it gets the torque that it wants, changing our overall gear ratio to 6. With 1060 gearing, the TC gets max torque with the belt all the way at the top, and we get overdrive down to a gear ratio of 5. The bottom line is you need to give your torque converter the gearing it wants, or it will fight back. And we can see a big improvement in the stats. With the 46, we only had a torque of 8. With the 60, we're all the way up to 10. And that drove our wheel horsepower from 5 to nearly 7. These new numbers made my mini bike wheelie on takeoff. My 0 to 30 went from 4.8 down to 4.6, and my top speed went from 40 to 43. And it did all this by reducing our RPM from 4300 down to 4100, closer to the motor's peak power band. And that's pretty much all I know about torque converters. If you like this dyno, you can get the app for free on your app store and get this at blackboxdyno.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to my next one where I'll be building this Wildcat with these parts from OMB Warehouse, these from EC Carburetors, and this shredder head from Childish Concepts. Thanks for watching.